October. Spooky season, it's finally upon us. And yes, it's it's actually been here, but I'm a little late, but that's beside the point. It's finally here, the month we all wait for every year. Easily the best month of the year. <sighs> Last year though, my spooky reads were a bit of a letdown. Let's see if this year we can break the spell. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the Neverland Book Club. I know we haven't done a formal TBR video in a few months, that's because I've been having more fun just mood reading my way through my TBR. I honestly feel like I've been reading more books lately and enjoying them more since not committing myself to a set TBR and then discussing the wrap up with you all. So I still intend on doing that for October, however I do have a few titles that I do plan on reading no matter what this month, but like always I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start by saying hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining us, we are glad to have you here. Hecate and I will be live streaming more often, so be sure to click that bell to be notified whenever we go live. If you haven't seen it yet, we recently had a live stream discussing our thoughts on The Priory of the Orange Tree and Den of Vipers, two of our wrap-up titles for today. Also, due to some confusion that we saw, we are extending the giveaway of the unreleased water bottle, so if you'd like to participate still and send me your memes, follow this link, or it's linked below in the description, or it might be a pinned comment. Just, it, it's everywhere. But the point is to just join Heartbeat, to join our little online community and submit your memes to be chosen at random to win one of our official unreleased Neverland Book Club water bottles. I read a lot in September. Was it a lot of smut? Maybe. But that's for a different video. There were only a select few titles I didn't particularly enjoy and one I was quite surprised I got through in its entirety. First, Hello? <laughs> First, The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Again, if you haven't watched our live stream, feel free to open that up in another tab and give it a listen. We had a lot to say about the book, so I won't repeat too much here, but the general consensus was good. Yes, good book. High fantasy with subtle sapphic romance, cool magic systems, religious commentary, highly feminist, well written, but not big on flowery prose. Do I recommend? Yes, four stars, not enough dragons, but when the dragons are there, fun. Next, we have Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. My, I have a physical copy, Hecate has it. She's borrowing it so we can do another live stream. So again, click the bell. Uh -huh. This book is one of those experiences I wish I could save in a pensive and just relive. I wanted everyone and no one to read this book. I couldn't bear someone having a bad thing to say about this book because I enjoyed it so much. I do have an entire review on this title coming out later, probably next month. It's already written, we're about to film it soon. So again, s subscribe. Oh my god, I'm a mess. <laughs> Be on the lookout for when that comes out. But for the sake of this video, a quick vibe check of the novel would include Alice in Wonderland, Piranesi, Addie LaRue, you know, all my favorite stories. The vibes of all of those wrapped up in one novel absolutely loved it. I want to say five stars, but that's not enough. All the stars, please. Go read it. But if you don't like it, just don't tell me. I can't take it. Next, we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Again, with the brilliance of this dear, dear woman. I loved it. It was an entire vibe. It scratched a nostalgic itch. It took me back in time to a place I am already familiar with, Malibu being somewhat close to the city I grew up in, and peeked behind the curtain of the life of celebrity. Reed has an uncanny ability to make celebrities feel real. You know, like what the new movie Blonde was trying to do, but instead just continue to exploit and dehumanize said celebrity? Yeah, don't watch it. Ana de Armas is beyond beautiful, but this film is just a... Uh... A big middle finger, but anywho, back to Malibu. Reed seems to be creating her own literary universe with her recurring characters throughout her novels. Mick Riva is mentioned in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, him being one of the husbands. And this book revolves around the life of his children and how much of a typical dad he was. You know, absent, too harsh. The book does try, is that too harsh? He's an absentee father, he's not very nice. He says he tried. But did he really? The book does try its very best to give him a bit of a redemption arc towards the end, but I won't spoil it for you here. Go read it. It's not as high stakes or highly emotional as Evelyn Hugo was, but it is quite engaging. I finished it in about a day and a half, and I do find myself thinking about the characters every now and then. 
I do have a signed copy of Carrie Soto is Back, Carrie Soto being one of the characters mentioned in Malibu Rising. See? Read. Clever lady, you. Read. Will I get to Carrie this month? Hopefully, but I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. We'll see. I keep going on mini tangents. Malibu Rising, do I recommend it? Yes, it was fun, melancholic, glamorous, ugly. The pros, the pros weren't ugly. Um, it was both glamorous and ugly is what I'm trying to say. Like it showed the ugly part of glam. The pros were good, the pros were pretty. Okay, the characters, the setting, the drama. Yes, it was better than, oh no. Was it better than Evelyn Hugo? No, <laughs> and for that, four stars. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't filmed a video in a while. <laughs> We've been doing too many live streams. Next, we have The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty, the final book in the Devabad trilogy. This epic conclusion to Nari's story had me much more engaged than the first two books, though I still feel like The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah did a better job in making me care about the characters in a similar setting. Are you laughing at the, at the way I said Abdullah? They are very different yet similar stories. The Empire of Gold employs elements of legend, culture, language design, and romance to tell a truly Middle Eastern fairy tale story. However, like most fantasy novels, the ending was a bit too happy for me. You know me, I love the misery porn. I have this weird love-hate relationship with novels that end too perfectly because on the one hand, Yes, we read novels to experience happy endings to give us hope that the world could be better than what it is. But then, on the other, more morose hand, we have realistic endings that are drenched in misery and pain and... realism. They make you feel more, they make you think more, they make you identify with the character on a more personal level that you just don't get from happier endings, maybe. I guess that's what mood reading is for. You gotta go for the ending you're in the mood for. And I suppose when I read this one, which one am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we took a break. <laughs> oh, you gotta go for the ending you're in the mood for. And I suppose when I read this one, I wasn't so much in the mood for a complete conflict resolution. I wanted the pain the Poppy Wars gave me again from another fantasy trilogy. I wanted that good sad sad. But do I recommend the trilogy in its entirety? Yes. If fantasy is your thing, I think this is definitely a solid trilogy. Just read it, don't listen to it. Or wait for me to come out with my own audiobook version before listening. Not at all guaranteed, but an Arabian girl can dream. I give this book 3.5 stars on its own and three stars to the whole trilogy. It's not perfect, but it's still definitely worth reading. All right, now for a bit of contemporary romance. Let's start with the good and end with the bad. The Bride Test by Helen Huang. You all know how much I adored the kiss quotient. Protagonists with relatable social anxieties and spectrum disorders introducing culture in a way that's pragmatic and eye-opening. A realistic timeline for the characters to actually fall in love with one another. And of course, don't forget unorthodox meetings rather than coincidental meet cute moments. The Kiss Quotient is still my favorite from Huang so far, but similar to Taylor Jenkins' read, it appears Helen Huang is attempting to create her own literary universe by using the same characters mentioned in previous books while always implementing a character on the autism spectrum at some point, which is nice. The Bride Test really showcases and humanizes one character's culture shock experience as she immigrates to America by the request of a mysterious old lady in the hopes of seducing her son, the, the old lady's son. She's not seducing her own son. That's a different book. <laughs> now, this book I believe is filled with accurate representations of cultural meddling old ladies. Arranged marriages are not such a thing of taboo in the East or Middle East when families facilitate a match between two people they agree to be compatible. It's books like this that could alter a Western viewpoint to the false stigma of such phenomena. Now, I wouldn't categorize this as an arranged marriage per se, more like a bribery nudge nudge, hey, do you mind coming back to America with me to seduce my son? He's cute. He has a picture of him, ha uh ha. -huh. You would make nice babies. Okay. <laughs> Anywho, I enjoyed the interactions between the two love interest characters. I felt engaged and interested in the story of our female protagonist and her struggles and determination to make it on her own, whether she was in her home country or in America. Just this, this one right here, just. I'm so proud of her. She's definitely one of those more modern, strong female characters in contemporary standpoint, rather than a magic wielding, sword forging, light bringing YA character who can't read. No shade to those. Okay, maybe a tiny bit of shade, but again, you gotta be in the mood for one or the other. I recommend this book for my contemporary romance readers who don't mind a bit more character-driven plot to their story. These characters grow in their own right as well as together, and it's just, 
is so cute. And I'm so proud of her. <laughs> 3.5 stars. It wasn't the kiss quotient, but it still had that feeling. Also, nice little sprinkle of spice. Because, of course, it's just... It's not too much spice. <clears throat> All right, now on to the small list of disappointments. First, we have the long-anticipated second novel from the up-and-coming new author, Ali Hazelwood, Love on the Brain. Now, I mentioned in my fall haul video that I support Miss Hazelwood as a fellow woman in STEM. However, when I read, excuse me. However, when I read this book, I wasn't sure if other women or men who are not in STEM would appreciate it in the same way. I felt a very specific connection to the main character in her struggles as a woman navigating in a male-dominated world. With Love Hypothesis, it felt like the stakes were lessened. We had a PhD candidate as our MC and a professor as the love interest. With this one, it's two well-established scientists. <laughs> it's two well-established scientists in different fields working together toward a main goal. We have enemies to lovers, marriage misunderstandings standings, forced proximities, workplace drama, giant man versus tiny woman, you know. Describing it now, it sounds like the perfect combination for a solid contemporary romance, but at the same time, I wasn't as taken with it as I was with Love Hypothesis. And as I've said before, I think I was just flat out wrong in rating Love Hypothesis so highly after I read it at the end of last year. I even put it in my top reads of 2021, and... No, I, I won't take it back now, because at the time, it was one of the best contemporary romance I had read, because it was basically the only one I had read. So yeah, now that I've had some time to sift through the good and the bad, these titles seem to settle right in the middle. They're not terrible, but they're not great either. For example, just a little tidbit, while reading the spicy scene in Love on the Brain, I came across a specific sentence that made me go, wait a minute. <laughs> I've read this before. The male character, in the heat of the moment, asks the female character, Can I fuck you? <laughs> it's romantic. I flew to my shelf, picked up Love Hypothesis, and found the spicy scene from that one, and there you have it. The same exact sentence. Can I fuck you? Ali, Miss Hazelwood, is this your idea of dirty talk? Is this your romantic experience? Because, honey, Write what you know, yes, but also maybe use a little imagination when writing your second novel so that the main characters of both don't feel like carbon copies of one another. I don't want to be too harsh. I think of you as a fellow in my field, but at the same time, we're talking about the book here, and I have to say I was let down in more ways than I enjoyed it. That's not to say I didn't still enjoy the scientific elements of the story. I found the research and inside look engaging, but for a contemporary romance novel, eh, three stars. Right in the middle. The last book I read in September, the book that had me on the edge of rage quitting the entire way through, the book that I never thought I was going to ever read despite finding it in the bottom of the bargain barrel at a thrift store, Den of Vipers by K.A. Knight. This book, I can't tell you how many times I put it down and said out loud to myself, what the f did I just read? <laughs> now, here's the thing. I've heard many readers warn about triggers. Check your triggers. Check your content warning before reading this book. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I have no reading triggers. Or so I thought. The one thing I was triggered by in this book was the amount of tongues being cut out. It's unnecessary. I didn't like it in The Mummy. Though I like literally everything else about that masterpiece of the movie. But Hecate and I already have a live stream out by the time you're watching this. So go w watch that. Because we had... You know what? I thought we would have more to say. But we had what we had to say, and we said it, and then that was it. Because it shouldn't be talked about any more than, than what we said. So I do not recommend this book to anyone for any reason. Did I have fun reading it? Yes, I'm not gonna lie. But was the fun worth the experience and time actually reading it? No, not really. If you are triggered by sexual violence and just gory violence in general, maybe stay away from this one. If you're triggered by bad writing, no plot, multiple characters with the same personality, and a female MC with a disorder I assume Harley Quinn shared, then sure, go ahead. I can't stop you. I would stop you if I could, but read what you like. Two stars. One for the fun of it, and the other for the fact that I've never read anything like it before. And that did surprise me here and there, so just... Can you th tr trash? Put this in the trash can, please. I don't want to put it in my, on my shelf. Yes, respect books, but this is not a book. This should this shouldn't have been printed. I mourn the tree. This was printed on. Respect books, but just not that one. All right. That wraps up our September 
wrap up. Now onto a quick <laughs> list. <laughs> now onto a quick list of the books I definitely want to get to this spooky season. There will very likely be more titles, but we'll cross that bridge when it's there and the goblin asks for the riddle and the blah 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 blah. First, I've been holding on to this one for a while now. It's been waiting patiently on my shelf, but I specifically wanted to read it in October for spooky season. I wanted to get into the vibe with this one, so Fairy Tale by Stephen King. King, my king. I have it written there, I can't wait, but I'm in the middle of it now, and it's, um, uh, it's, it's great. It's awesome, it's amazing. It's fantastic, it's king, my king. I'm biased, but I think it's fantastic. Next, we have another Aaron Morgan's turn title, The Night Circus. This book has been recommended to me by a number of close reading friends, including Hecate and Chelsea, bestie from the North. So I look forward to also reading this during the spooky season. Oh, look, it's a picture of her in the back. <gasps> look at her eyes. They're so pretty. Okay, so, so this one. Oh, respect Next, we have a title that was sent to me by today's shout out, Shelby B. I assume it was you that sent the book, dear Shelby. I did send you a thank you note through Amazon and that was the only name available and then I cross-referenced the name to my comments and found this comment saying to be on the lookout for a letter. So I assume it was you, but A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I have seen this title before and have been meaning to read it and now I have no more excuses. It also came with a lovely note. Happy early birthday. I am so convinced you will love this book. You will want to read the other two in the trilogy. It has a little of everything, even Halloween scenes, magic, history, and spice. You know me better than most of the people that know me in person. If it was you, Shelby, who sent this, or if it wasn't, whoever sent this, please let me know who you are. I'd like to thank you very much for the gesture. This was very kind of you to send. It's very, very much appreciated. Thank you. And um, not that I'm asking, but you know, if you do want to send me anything that is not alive or perishable, there's a PO box that in the description. And yeah, you can send me whatever you'd like. Again, that is appropriate for the mail system. As I've said, I'll likely read more, but we shall see. Probably more smut, because honestly, it's so soothing. It just gets me through my day sometimes. <laughs> I may have a problem. This month is always the busiest month of the year, and that's why we're only filming this now, because it's been incredibly hectic, but blah, 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 blah. All right, that's all I have for you today, dear viewers. Be sure to like this video if you liked it, and subscribe if you're not. If you've made it this far into the video, I thank you for your retention. I have a feeling you'll enjoy our past or future live streams. Let's see, I've already mentioned today's shout out. Uh, ah, yes, uh, don't forget to join Heartbeat and do the, and do the, the meme thing and it's, it's, it's follow this link, you type it in or click the one below and the thing, you know what to do. All right, I'm off to go read and write my way through the best month of the year. So stressful. Stay lost, keep reading. This cape is hot.